Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Yes. Good evening. Do you know that the United States government is spying on you? Every email you send, every search you do, every post you, you know, post, <laughs> every picture you upload, they have access to all of it, and then they go through it regularly, you know, to look for terrorists and patterns and any other stuff. When this news first broke out last month, it completely shocked me. You know, the the amount of uh, you know, the you know, anyway, it was pretty shocking news. But the thing that surprised me the most was how little people actually cared about it. You know, it didn't really feature much in the mainstream media, and none of my friends were really bothered. You know, okay, yeah, uh, there's pioneers, who cares about it? This showed me that despite the presence, you know, of viruses, malwares, trojans, spyware, adware, scamware, and whatnot in the internet, the biggest threat we face is a total lack of control over our information. And in this speech, I hope to convince you that you should be more concerned about it. This is a popular TV show that likes to remind everyone that uh, Big Boss is always watching you. And uh, in this day and age, that statement is not really very far from the truth. There are more than 1,000 companies on the internet that track your every move. You know, and they build extensive profiles of your tastes and habits so they can suggest more relevant advertisements. What sort of data do these companies keep? Well, for starters, almost everything. They have access to your name, your race, your gender, your employment history, your friends, your family, uh, your habits, your uh, criminal records if you have any, and even your complete financial information. This doesn't end here. For example, if you install WhatsApp on your phone, you required, you're, you're required to give it access to your uh, phone contacts, which it then promptly uploads onto its own servers. And uh, while a major prominent application like WhatsApp might be able to take better care of your personal data, there's no guarantee that some funky new SMS application that you decide to try out will be able to take uh, will more care about your data. In this day and age, if you think that your phone contacts and other details are uh, secret, then I suggest you go to the website truecaller.com and just key in your number. You will be shocked to find out that it will be able to identify your name, your location, and it even suggests some of the nicknames your friends call you with. <laughs> I looked up online and I found my dad and my mom's number over there, you know, nicely written over there. The worst part about the internet is uh, that you don't even own the data that you share online. All the social networking companies like uh, Facebook and Twitter they have broad terms of license, which allow them, which you know, give them complete control over any photos you upload, and they even include clauses which allow them to use that content in any way they see fit. My brother experienced this firsthand when he saw that his photo was being used in a Facebook advertisement for Viagra. <laughs> so you might be thinking, you know, there's so much data online. You know, who's going to sit down and just go through my data? You know your safety in numbers. Okay. But that's not true. As machines are becoming more and more powerful and as techniques become more refined, it is becoming extremely easy to extract patterns from all this data that is there available. There's a very popular story in the data mining community about the American retailer Target. Uh, Target, you see, wanted one question answered. Would it be possible to identify if a certain customer was pregnant or not? The reason behind that is that new parents tend to be so exhausted from dealing with their kids that they generally do all their shopping from only one place. Mm -hmm. yeah. This makes them a very valuable customer base for uh, all these retailers. So anyway, they went to a statistician, gave him access to all the consumer purchase history that they had maintained, and told him, okay, just work your magic. So this guy, he builds a model that uh, predicts if a customer is uh, in the early stages of pregnancy based on certain shopping patterns. Then the company would send discount to <laughs> baby products to the identified customers. The model they built was so successful, it led to some really creepy scenario. For example, one day a man walks into the store and he starts arguing with the customer, with the staff over there. He says, my daughter is still in high school. You know, how dare you send her coupons for pregnancy related stuff. Anyway, two days later, he calls back and he apologizes stating that uh, she actually was pregnant, he just didn't know about it. <laughs> so, I hope you can begin to understand uh, why uh, 
you should be more concerned about uh, your data online. So I, here are some of the things you can do to protect your privacy. For example, uh, the simplest thing you can do is to install Privacy Fix. The Privacy Fix is a free add-on for Chrome and Firefox, which uh, checks all your, uh, which checks the privacy settings of your Facebook, Google, and LinkedIn account, and uh, it'll help you analyze what areas of your uh, profile are exposed to the public and what you can do to fix it. It's very easy to install. It's quick and it's totally safe. All the data is on your side of the net. So, if you are working on a mobile, if you have an Android or an iPhone, the most safest thing you can do is to go through in more detail the uh, permissions that an application requests for you. For example, the other day I was looking at some calculator application and it wanted access to my location history, phone contacts, and all other details. Why would a calculator application need all of that? You know, <laughs> you're better off not installing it. In fact, if you want uh, more fine-grained control, there's a variant of uh, Android called Cyanogen Mod, which has a new feature called Incognito Mode. In this mode, you get more fine-grained control over all the application permissions. For example, if an application requests access to your contacts, it will allow you to just load a set of dummy contacts rather than sharing your actual numbers. Now, if you're concerned about your government spying on you and you want complete anonymity, there are some more powerful techniques available, such as you, Tor, which is for anonymous browsing. You have GNUPG, which is for uh, encrypted email. And you can use uh, Pitchdin with OTR for encrypted chatting. So you've given, I've given some set of uh, tools for which you can help protect your privacy. But uh, I'd like to conclude by stating that this is one rule in the internet, is to assume that there are no secrets. So if you have any data which you want to share and which has a high likelihood, uh, so if you have any data which you don't want everybody to find out, you're better off not putting it on the internet. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sathya. Uh, for